All people round the earth rejoice to God most high, our sovereign King. Serve God with cheerful heart and voice. With all your tongues, God's glory sing. Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Office. I'm so glad you could join me and thank you. This is morning prayer for Wednesday, August the 7th. It's the 11th week after Pentecost and week 5 in the Psalm cycle. And the scripture for this service, Psalm 119, verse 97 to 120. And 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1 to 13. Open my lips, my mouth shall declare your praise. Alleluia, oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Alleluia. Psalm 119. Alleluia, oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Your commandments have made me wiser than my enemies for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep your precepts. I have restrained my feet from every evil way, that I might keep your word. I have not departed from your judgments, for you have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I gain understanding, and therefore I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. I have sworn, and I will perform. I will keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply afflicted, O God, Give me life according to your word. Accept offerings from my mouth and teach me your judgments. My life is continually in my hand, and yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, and yet I have not strayed from your precepts. Your testimonies are my inheritance forever, for they are the joy of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes, always, even to the end. I hate vain thoughts, but I love your law. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Depart from me, you evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according to your word that I may live and not be ashamed. Hold me up and I shall be safe. I will always respect your statutes. You have trodden down them that stray from your statutes, for their deceitfulness is in vain. You put away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, I love your testimonies. My flesh trembles in fear of you, and I am afraid of your judgments. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Alleluia. The lesson is from the second book of Samuel, chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. And David asked, Is there still anyone left of the house of Saul to whom I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba, and he, he was summoned to David. And the king said to him, Are you Ziba? And he said, At your service. The king said, Is there anyone remaining of the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, There remains a son of Jonathan. He is crippled in his feet. 
And the king said to him, Where is he? And Ziba said, He is in the house of Machir, son of Amiel, at Lodabar. Then King David sent and brought him from the house of Machir, son of Amaliel, to, at Lodibar. Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, son of Saul, came to David and fell on his face and did obeisance. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, I am your servant. David said, Do not be afraid, for I will show you kindness for the sake of your father Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land of your grandfather Saul, and you yourself shall eat at my table always. He did obeisance and said, What is your servant that you should look upon a dead dog such as I? And then the king summoned Saul's servant Deba Ziba and said to him, All that belonged to Saul and to all his house I have given to your master's grandson. You and your sons and your servants shall till the land for him and shall bring in the produce, so that your master's grandson may have food to eat. But your master's grandson Mephibosheth shall always eat at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then Ziba said to the king, According to all that my lord the king commands his servant, so your servant will do. Mephibosheth ate at David's table like one of the king's sons. Now Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah, and all who lived in Ziba's house became Meshibbeth's servants. Meshibbeth lived in Jerusalem, for he always ate at the king's table. Now he was lame in both feet. Here ends the lesson. And now let us offer our prayers and petitions for the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and found without fault at the day of your coming. For all of our church leaders and for all clergy ministers and for all people, the holy people of God. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that we may be one as you and the Father are one. For peace in Jerusalem and in all the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and the freedom of every person. for the poor and the persecuted, for the sick especially Carol, and for all who suffer, for refugees and prisoners, and for all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. For all who commended themselves to our prayers, our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy and peace and help for the Mercy of God community and for the Sisters of St. Francis of Philadelphia. For Pam, for continued uh, guidance and peace in her job transition. For Sarah and Stephen Michael, for William and Stephen Edward, and for all who died in the communion of your church, and for those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. Rejoicing in the fellowship of Francis and Claire and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all of our lives to Christ our God. That God who's begun this ministry may bring it to fulfillment. For the intentions of all who've asked our prayers and for all of your intentions. Our beloved which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Let us pray. O Most High God, save us, for we seek your precepts and love to do your will. Accept our praise as we sing your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. We trust in the mercy of God forever. And glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. <laughs> 